Hi, my name is Vachevor Perian. This is the third video of my course, How to Solve Circuits the Right Way, Once and for All. I'd like to call it The Joys of Circuit Analysis. These lectures are based on my book, Fast Analytical Techniques in Electrical and Electronic Circuits, published by Cambridge University Press and available online from any bookseller. In this video, I will continue with the topic of painless and joyful circuit analysis, and I will solve more examples of the bridge circuit, including a reactive bridge circuit. Continuing with multiple meaningful solutions, I'm going to work out once again the input resistance of the bridge circuit, this time with R2 taken out as an open circuit. In my previous two videos, I took each of R1 and Rb out and reinstated them using the extra element theorem. Just for reinforcement, in this example, I'm going to take R2 out and show you the steps of applying the extra element theorem. Now, if we take out R2 as an open circuit, this will be the form of the EET. In it, you will have to determine the input resistance with R2 infinity, and then you will determine the resistance looking back into the circuit from port 2, where R2 was connected, with the input port short. And then you look back into the circuit from port 2 and determine the resistance with the input port open. I will show you now each one of these steps. Step one, take R2 out as an open circuit. There it goes. Next, determine the input resistance with R2 out of the circuit. And this we can write by inspection as R1 plus R3 in parallel with Rb plus R4. Step two, determine the resistance looking back into the circuit from port two with the input port short-circuited. We call this script R super two, and we see that with a short in the input, R1 is in parallel with R3. And this terminal here is coincident with this point here. Therefore, script R2 is R4 in parallel with Rb plus R1 parallel R3. And we write that down. Step three. Determine the resistance looking back into the network from port 2 with the input port open. This we can easily write by inspection again. It is R1 in series with the parallel combination of Rb with R3 plus R4. And we're done with our three independent calculations. Next, we are going to substitute each of these in the structure of the extra element theorem to obtain the complete answer for the input resistance Rn. Step four, here is the structure of the extra element theorem into which we are going to insert our three independent calculation. And here comes the partial credit answer. Here comes script R super two in the numerator, and here comes Roman R super two in the denominator. And this is our third analytical answer for the input resistance of the bridge circuit with R2 taken as a parameter. R2 stands out by itself in this equation and does not appear in any one of these three, simply because these three were computed in the absence of R2. And as such, this equation is the best form to study the dependence of Rn on R2. Painless, isn't it? Let's continue with our discussion. As mentioned earlier, we have five meaningful and analytical solutions to the input resistance, one for each resistor of the bridge circuit. Each solution yields the input resistance parametrized in terms of one of the chosen resistors designated as the extra element. This technique is known as parameter extraction and the technique that you just learned is the most effective and simplest possible way to perform parametric analysis. But wait, there are five more meaningful analytical solutions that we can obtain if we choose to take out each resistor by shorting it instead of opening it, because shorting a resistor will equally well simplify the network as taking it out as an open circuit. That brings the total to 10 meaningful analytical solutions. Let us see how. 
Determine the input resistance with RB as a parameter now, but take out RB as a short instead of an open, which is what we did when we started this series of lectures at the very beginning of the course. So let us take it out as a short. There it goes, and in comes a short. We can now write the input resistance right away with RB equal to zero, and that is R1 parallel R2 in series with R3 parallel R4. This is the partial credit answer now, and is the value of the input resistance, as we said, for RB equal to zero rather than RB equal to infinity. Now, steps two and three are identically the same as before. In step two, we are going to determine the resistance looking back into the network from port B while the input port is a short circuit. Meaning, it doesn't matter how you take out that resistor RB, whether you take it out as a short or an open, this step is identically the same as before because you are looking back into the circuit from that port where it was connected. So, for, we figured out last time that this is by inspection, simply R1 parallel R3 in series with R2 parallel R4. Step three, same thing as before, look back into the network from port B and determine the resistance with the input port and open circuit, what we called Roman R super B, and that two we can write by inspection as R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3 plus R4. In the final and fourth step, we obtain the input resistance by assembling the three separate calculations according to this formula, which is the second version given by the extra element theorem. Here you notice that RB is sitting in the little numerator in the big numerator and in the little numerator in the big denominator. This is because when RB goes to zero, the input resistance coincides with the input resistance with RB set equal to zero. In the previous version of the extra element theorem, these two expressions were flipped because RB was taken out as infinity, as an open circuit. So when RB goes to infinity, this term and this term would drop out in that case, and the input resistance Rn would coincide with the value of the input resistance with RB set to infinity. So now let us perform the substitutions. Here comes the partial credit answer. And here comes the script R super B. And here comes Roman R super B. And here is the expression of the input resistance with RB initially taken out as a short circuit. Another useful analytical answer for the same reasons that we mentioned before. All the elements are grouped together in series parallel combinations and as ratios compared to unity. That makes this expression very amenable to approximations and conveys a lot of information about what is going on inside the circuit as far as these elements are concerned. Painless, isn't it? And you recognize now that you have one such expression for each resistor of the bridge network. And that brings the total of 10 meaningful answers for the input resistance for the bridge circuit, each one obtained with minimum algebra, almost by inspection. Let us have a discussion now. How do we choose whether to take an element out as a short or an open? You're free to do either, but if you want to choose wisely, here are some guidelines. Check both cases first and see which results in the simplest circuit and stick with it. But if you are doing parametric analysis for a particular resistor and you happen to know that the value of that resistor is typically much larger than any of the other resistors inside that circuit, then it's advisable to take it out as an open because the answer that you get in step one dominates the solution and you want that to appear first. The rest 
comes in as a correction factor to the dominant behavior of the circuit. Likewise, if the value of the resistor is a small, it's advisable that you take it out as a short for the same reason that the answer that you get in the step one dominates the solution and you want that to appear first and the rest of the expression comes in as a correction factor. Now we come to the interesting case when the element that we take out of the circuit is a capacitor and an inductor. When you take the capacitor out as an open, it means that you are looking at the circuit at very low frequencies. So you're looking at the dominant low frequency behavior. If you decide to take the capacitor out as a short, it means that you are looking at the high frequency behavior of the circuit. So you are determining the high frequency asymptote. And the same thing goes for the inductor. I'm going to show you now four steps to painless analysis of a reactive bridge circuit. We are going to determine the input impedance of this bridge circuit where the bridge element is a capacitor instead of a resistor. So we're going to take this out of the circuit and reinstate it using the extra element theorem. Let us see how. The capacitor has a reactance 1 over SCB, which takes the place of the value of the bridge resistor that we were using before. Hence, if we want to take the capacitor out as an open circuit, it means that we're looking at the circuit at zero frequency or at very low frequencies. If we replace it with a short circuit, it means that we're looking at the circuit at very high frequencies. Step one, let's take the capacitor out as an open circuit. And let us determine the resistance looking into the input port. Well, we've done that before. It is R1 plus R3 in parallel with R2 plus R4. Second step, we've done that before also. Look back into the network from port B with the input shorted and determine script R super B. And that is R1 parallel R3 plus R2 parallel R4. Third step, we've done that before too. Look back into the network from port B with the input port open. That resistance is given by R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3 plus R4. We're done. Let's see how. Now we apply the extra element theorem and we substitute each one of these three calculations in it. And here is the low frequency input resistance or the zero frequency input resistance. Here is a script R super B and here is Roman R super B. Now, when we put the value of ZB, the capacitive reactance in it, we get our final answer for the input reactance of the bridge circuit. At low frequencies, it behaves as R1 plus R3 in parallel with R2 plus R4. And then we have a frequency dependent first order factor, a zero and a pole. Let us discuss our result a little further. We can and should always put Z in of S in pole zero and low frequency asymptote form as follows. R zero is the low frequency asymptote, omega Z is the zero and omega P is the pole. We write these down properly and there is your pole and there is your zero and there is your low frequency asymptote. You can see now that we were able to obtain our complex input impedance without ever having to carry the term 1 over SC in our algebra. That came in at the very end by way of the extra element theorem. Once again, you realize that you just completed the analysis of a reactive bridge circuit by analyzing three purely resistive circuits by inspection and assembling the answer in meaningful pole zero and low frequency asymptote form. This was just a demonstration with one reactive element for an impedance function looking into a port of a network. In the future, I'm going to show you that you can do this for any transfer function of a circuit with any number of reactive elements with the help of the n extra element theorem. So that is something to look forward to. This is why I call this painless 
and joyful circuit analysis. I hope you agree with me. Thank you.